The oldest U.S. destroyer still in service at the start of World War II was USS Allen, the single remaining ship of the 1,100-ton Samson class. These ships actually came before the famous flush deck or four-stack destroyers, being the tail end of the less well-known thousand-tonners. They had a raised deck that ran the forward quarter of the hull to help keep the ship dry. Samson was started April 25, 1915, finished June 27, 1916, and decommissioned June 15, 1921. Rowan was started May 10, 1915, finished August 22, 1916, and decommissioned June 19, 1922. Davis was started May 7, 1915, finished October 5, 1916, and decommissioned June 20, 1922. Allen was started May 10, 1915, and finished January 24, 1917. Wilkes was started March 11, 1915, finished November 10, 1916, and decommissioned June 5, 1922. Shaw was started February 7, 1916, finished April 9, 1917, and decommissioned June 21, 1922. Of the five decommissioned in mid-1922, all survived until the mid-30s. This was done by transferring them to the Coast Guard. They would spend nearly a decade and a half with the melancholy task of trying to intercept bootleggers as the U.S. struggled to enforce prohibition. When the 21st Amendment was passed, they became superfluous and were finally scrapped. Main armament was four four-inch, fifty-caliber, low-angle guns in open mounts, one on the bow, one on the stern, and two midship with one on either side. A capable, if uninspiring, gun at the time of World War I, it fired a 64-pound shell at up to nine rounds per minute. Needless to say, by World War II, with a low turning and elevating speed, they were incapable of engaging enemy aircraft, so weren't acceptable destroyer weapons. Still, being light, they did make excellent guns for submarines on the occasion they attacked enemy ships on the surface to conserve torpedoes. Originally mounting 12 by World War II, Allen was down to six torpedo tubes in two triple mounts, one on either side. Originally lacking depth charges, by World War II, Allen had been fitted with two depth charge racks at the stern and six depth charge throwers. For armor, they had, moving right along, propulsion came from four boilers that generated 17,600 horsepower to two shafts. This moved the ships up to just under 30 knots. As with most World War I era destroyers, their turning radius was poor. A severe handicap when trying to hunt a sub. Allen was in Pearl Harbor when the Japanese attacked. Old, small, underarmed, and slow, she was obviously unfit for frontline duty. Despite this, she played a very crucial, if unglorious, role. Aside from the usual escorting convoys, she served as a gunnery training ship. More importantly, she served as a submarine and anti submarine training ship. Many of the Pacific Fleet's best submarines gained valuable hands-on experience by hunting and being hunted by Allen. This was practical knowledge they would time and again put to devastating use. It has been argued, aircraft and A-bombs aside, the U.S.'s submarine fleet alone could have brought Japan to its knees, just as the U-boat nearly did to the British Empire in both world wars. A quick glance at the sheer volume of war and merchant ships sunk by American submarines makes this all too believable. Allen played no small part in honing the submarine's fleet skill to such a killing edge. This, she was finally decommissioned October 15, 1945 and sold for scrap a year later.